Hey, what's going on YouTube? Here's a view of the uh, free fair ladies after the wheel swaps. I think they came out really nice with the white wheels. They looked good. They looked really good with the black wheels. But uh, I think they look really, really good with the white. Especially the blue one. I just think the white and blue looks really nice together. Very cool. So there's the blue. There's the red. What do you guys think? If you're on Instagram, you saw them last night. I, I got carried away posted a ton of pictures of these up on Instagram once I got those wheels on because uh, they came the the white wheel or the yeah the white wheels are really hard to come by I don't know if Hot Wheels has ever released a car with those they are original Hot Wheels wheels and tires I got them through a Malaysia hookup and uh I have a feeling that we're going to be seeing something with those wheels on it soon because usually that's what happens. Uh, a guy posted up a hundred of them. He was selling them for five bucks a set. You had to buy a minimum of four sets. Or maybe it was four bucks a set and you had to buy a minimum of five. I don't remember. These are the, t the wheels and tires that were on them. And I believe, not positive, but I think these are from the... Uh, the Urban Outlaw Dodge Charger from the Redliner series, the Redliner set. So they're actually the same wheels, just uh, these ones are white and other ones were black, but these also have the Goodyear tires. So I, uh, I love them with the white. Uh, I'm going to keep them that way. I just have to figure out how I'm going to display those, if I'm going to put them in the Carney case or if I'm going to put them in a, an acrylic as like a, maybe a Brock Racing little diorama thing. But uh, anyways, I was out tonight and I am an avid collector of green light and I, I have, whoa, I have what I would call a fair extent, extent of knowledge about green light and, you know, what they do and how their cars are made and production runs and all of that kind of stuff. But when it comes to the 1 to 43 scale, I know nothing. But I've, I'm have i under the impression from what I've seen that with this particular car, the black roof is the chase. They had four others and they all had white roofs. So I, put, I picked this one up. Uh, I don't collect this scale. So this will be, I need to find out if it is a chase. If it's not a chase, I'll probably honestly just return it. If it is a chase, I'll try to trade it or sell it. And I'm not going to look to get rich off of it. I would trade it for, you know, a 1 to 64 scale green machine or something. But I need to figure out if it's a chase first. Um, kind of sticking with that theme of green light chase cars that are not green machines. This one is 1 to 64 scale. And it's a chase piece, which also does not feature any green paint anywhere or green wheels. This, uh, the regular version of this, they have the yellow hazmat suits on and they don't have the respirators and there are no bullet holes in the door. So, um, I don't really know what to think about this. It's an M&J exclusive. I really don't care for it, to be honest. Uh, this is something that I will be looking to trade or sell for something else that I'd rather have. Unless the production run numbers come out and it's some, you know, under a hundred of them made or something like that, then I might hang on to it. But uh, anyways, short and sweet video. Uh, I finally... My Toys R Us finally hit. It has been three or four months. Before I get into that, though, I found another one of these at Hobby Lobby. So with the 40% off, it's like $4. 
and I will buy every single one of these that I see for four dollars. I think I have four or five now of that, and then I have two of the green machine, and uh, that's referring to the new one with the uh, the cougar. I also have a couple of the original from series eight, but I was able to find some of the new Johnny Lightning stuff. I already cracked it open. But uh, really nice work that they've been doing. Also, I saw on Round 2's YouTube channel the new Auto World release on the, the muscle wagons. It's not going to be painted wood. It's going to be tampoed. So it's going to have a grainy look to it. They look really, really good. Which is actually how they did the uh, the Grand Wagoneer in the Johnny Lightning from release one. So very cool car there. Uh, I was roped the Warlock, which I think might be the nicest car in the set. This is probably my second favorite, the 73 Pontiac GTO. I love this casting because you just can't find a 73 GTO in this scale. There just aren't a lot of them out there. And the focus is absolutely awful. Let's see if I can fix that maybe. The light behind us. Really nice gloss finish with the uh, you got the vinyl top simulation there with the flat black you've got the chrome trim around all of the windows really nice wheels and tires it's a heavy casting metal body metal base I love the front end on this this was a time when General Motors and actually Ford too we're really starting to get big. They were big in the 50s and they were huge in the 60s. And then from 68 to about 72, they kind of got smaller with the Chevelles and the GTO. And then in the early 70s, everything just got massive. But this is a sweet GTO. Really nice looking car. And then the last one that I picked up is this little... Chevy Vega station wagon little two-door no frills awesome little car it's almost like half hatchback half wagon really nice detail yet it's a really simple finish and to compare it with another Johnny Lightning two-door station wagon the 65 Chevelle um, they're both awesome little cars. But you can see how much bigger the Chevelle is. But the Vega has rubber tires, the Chevelle does not. So anyways, quick video tonight, that's the haul. And I also just wanted to show everyone The, uh, the white tires, even though most of you probably saw them last night. I'm going to try something here on my camera. Hang on. No, it won't do it. Once you're recording, you got to stay upright. This is going to be an interesting video to play back. Maybe this one will get more than uh, the, that one guy that dislikes my videos. Maybe he'll have some company here. There's that street level view. I really need to start working on this diorama. I was at Hobby Lobby tonight and I almost bought some stuff. I really need to get back to it and get it finished up because I, I see a lot of potential here. But uh, there's just so much more that could be done that's easy to do and it's cheap. And I need to start out by not piling a bunch of junk on it.
But yeah, I don't know what it is. I, I really like the street level view. Especially when we get to those two bad boys. Those should really should be on the pavement. Those are not dirt track cars. So after getting these last night, I went online and Googled Brock Racing Fair Lady 2000. And they actually made them and they actually raced them. But uh, they, they, those were, uh, I don't know if I'd say convertible or spider top. They didn't have a roof or even a windshield for that matter. But really cool. I, I think it's awesome to have something different, you know. All the hype is the, the BRE 510 or the 510 wagon or the 240Z. But uh, I thought it was really cool to get the Fair Lady, especially with this level of quality, which is really, I, th I think, stunning. Very, very good quality. And I strongly recommend him. If any of you want a custom made, contact him. I'll just tell you straight out what I paid for these was $65 a piece shipped. Now that is a lot of money for a custom from somebody who's not very well known. Boxman's customs go for at least double that. Well, at least the Silverados do. Some of the other ones probably don't. But I assure you that the quality of these is every bit as good. I would bet a lot of money on it. So... Um, if you have something in mind, I can get you his name. Uh, I think his brother might be a subscriber to the channel, but I would suggest just getting on Instagram because that's where you need to be anyways. If you're a collector, you need to be on Instagram and it's a lot easier to communicate. It's easier to find the stuff that you're looking for and, uh, it's absolutely the best platform for diecast Instagram so all right three cars 12 13 minutes you all have a good weekend hunt yourself some awesome diecast I'm going tomorrow I'm gonna go get some uh, Kyosho and maybe some Tamika as well as some other stuff from Ford's Man 84. I'm going to be taking him a box. I think I also might be picking up a Hot Wheels garage set. So we'll see what happens with that. So until next time, which will probably be tomorrow night, you all have a good night, and I will holler at the next video.